I am your host, Chris Cartea, and this is the 43rd Candle Edition. That's right. At the time of this airing of this episode, it will be my 43rd birthday. It's hard to believe, isn't it? A guy like me, uh, 43 years old, um, Nerf modder, guitarist, all this stuff, had a whole life ahead of him. I mean, I act so young and everything else, but then again, I admire people that act young. I admire people that have that youthful spirit that Peter Pan sort of thing going on about them. And I really encourage people, you know, don't grow up too fast, man. Because if you do, life will just, they'll pass you by. It really will. This week, uh, I've got some um, updates on a, a couple of projects my friends have been working on. A new Kickstarter that um, Nerf Legend is working on that I believe is very important. And a few other updates here and there. So don't you go changing. So, we got a war on the 29th, Manhattan Beach Nerf Club, Pollywog Park. This will be, um, th this will be on the 29th. It starts at 11, so, uh, go ahead and, uh, show up. It ends at 4. I should be able to make this war. It's a 150 cap, but it's really good for your rival blasters. I recently put an 8K in my Mauser fire because I'm going to yet another war that has a 150 cap, uh, middle of the month called Ragnar Oktoberfest. Yes, I'm going with this group. I'm going with Manhattan Beach Nerf Club, so I should be able to make it. I have to finish up my registration and everything, all that, and I am going to be in the sniper competition, and oh my gosh, I'm not telling you what blaster I'm using. I'm not telling anybody what blaster I'm using. It is secret, but let's just say last week, I finally took it out for the first time outside. I fired it at a little cage that was about, here, let me give you some size comparison here, from about 65 feet, there was a little cage that triangled like this, and here was the top of the wall, and there was that. I pointed it at that cage, and heard a clink, nailed it. So then I decided to take a few shots at a brick, just one brick pattern, about, you know, concrete brick size, maybe this, maybe about this big. And every one of my shots went from 65 feet. So you guys got your hands full, let me tell you. Um, and not only that, but I got some really good scopes, as you can see. I mean, that's a really good 3x90 40 right there. Um, I may be rolling with 3x40. I may be rolling with a 4x16. I don't know yet. But let's just say, yeah, I'm going to keep my sniper blaster a little secret at the moment so nobody really knows. <laughs> I mean, I am a madman. You can't blame me, can you? I was pleased to hear this week that my friend, ah, hair everywhere. I hate it when that happens. Alan Turbino, also known as OC Nerf, he built a uh, Merlin. Yeah, a long Merlin, it looks like. He built it a little differently. Most of my Merlins are one quarter twist to one half twist. The shorter ones being three eighths twist. He made this one uh, seven thirty seconds twist. Um, going off a text of uh, some research with pellet guns and things like that, that too much spin is, is too much. So um, it's going to be really interesting. I think he's using it on a sleeper long shot. I'm not sure. But man, great job. Look at look at this job with the glue. One of the hardest things on the Merlin to do is to get the glue. Now, typically, I mine don't look that neat on the inside. And the reason is because this is like the low pressure surface right here. But the uh, these are the high pressure surface. What do I mean by that? On a Merlin, the only things that are really pressing on the dart because these are the, the insides are the same diameter as the barrel is this part right here. It drags a little on the outside, but not too much. So as long as you clean it up a little, you're okay. Um, ought to be really interesting. I'm probably going to see him on Saturday. Uh, I got that Nerf meet. Uh, it's probably, it'll be really interesting to see that Merlin in action. I, I can't wait because this thing looks really cool. And I'm really happy that somebody did it. was like that time that one guy did, um, Herbert, he did he did the Bird of Prey. He did, and he invented the Type A. Did you know that? Uh, Herbert actually invented the Type A. I didn't invent it. I invented the LT. I invented the Type L. He invented the Type A. And, oh, man, is it powerful. It reared, it reared its ugly head. At Armageddon, oh boy, man, I hit somebody from 244 feet away. It was pretty hairy, you know? I mean, really. So I'm really happy when people build my creations and they do them and, and they and they, and they people learn from them and they're an example, and I'm an example. I, I love that. That's really great. I've been in the Nerf Money community for over nine years now. So I would really like you to see 
this video. Like this is Bob Willow, five things I wish nerf modders would stop doing. And he mainly talks about flywheel blasters, and he talks about the habits of using trust fires and IMRs, when there are better batteries available, with better motors, things like that, and people that don't know how to solder. Well, one reason I don't flywheel, I'm Springer, but the other reason is I'm terrible at soldering, yeah. So, um, I really like this video, and I'm going to make one like it. Um, as a matter of fact, why don't I just tell you right now the five things that drive me nuts uh, in the Nerf Money community. Since he made one, I might as well say it. Okay. Number one, I hate people that think that Nerf is one thing or another and that's it. It's all flywheel or it's all Nick or it's all Singapore modded stock. No, no, no. It's all together. I have been at wars where I have seen Boomtendo, me with my Singapore modded stock, Ice 9 with like, you know, an air gun or, or a snap pull. Okay. I've seen uh, wars where Nate Little was shooting uh, a Zingbo. I kid you not. In the same war, I have seen all walks of nerf. I've seen, um, you know, Corey Riven uh, with a, with a caliber, and then I see Cannonball with a flywheel blaster. You know, like a like a like a rapid strike. Yeah, in the same war. No shit, man. No shit. And that tells me right there that nerf is kind of just all together, and that a lot of stuff just has its own thing, but it is actually all one. It's just it's what class of nerf do you want to be in that sort of thing so number one i hate people that think it's one or the other okay number two panhandlers i hate panhandlers people that go and beg oh can you give me a free nerf blaster can i get can you get me a parts kit can you get me 300 stephens dude seriously you know, I mean, this hobby is fairly inexpensive, and if you put your heart to it, you can get what you want. I'm one of those people who doesn't like the panhandle. I got a broken tooth right now. Yeah. Um, I'm probably going to have to go to Medi-Cal and, uh, and, and get that done. Okay. Um, you know, and, and I don't ask any, anybody for any money. And I'm poor, man. I live on less than $1,000 a month. I'm poor. And then there are people that, I mean, literally just panhandle. Or people that want stuff, um, new computer, this or that. I've seen people do that. And it's like, no, you know. I, d don't exploit your fan base. I hate people that also exploit their fan base and try to get stuff out of them, too. If people want to send me stuff, you can send me stuff. I have my address. And people do send me stuff, either to work on, to do reviews on, or just out of appreciation, like, um, you know, Rex Graham uh, sent me this bird of prey. This one right here. Yeah, I love it. It's a great trigger bird of prey. I, you know, well, star shot. Sorry, I never had a great trigger star shot in my life. I've always had the uh, uh, the normal trigger ones. Which normal trigger ones aren't orange. They're actually uh, they're actually violet. Yeah, and you you can tell it has a much harder spring pull. Because it's made for the USA limits, not the Australian limits. But that is a great trigger. Star shot. Holy crap. You know? And I love it when people send me stuff. Um, I'll, also, I'll also collaborate with you and stuff like that. Things like that. Um, number three. People that you help out. Now, of course, as you know, you can always write me on Facebook. And ask for my help. If you're going to have video conference with me, um, well, this week was really bad. We had, like, an outage that took out half of Santa Clarita, uh, a, you know, a couple days ago. And everything on Sierra Highway was down. All the gas stations were down, everything. The lights were, the street lights were down, everything. And we had a really big brush fire over in Castaic, which is, by the way, six, about five, six miles as the bird flies. It's not, now it's actually closer. It's, like, four miles away from where I'm at right now. And... A friend of mine uh, tried to call me, and I couldn't get a hold of him. And I kept trying to answer, and it just wouldn't, like, the last time I tried to answer, and it just wouldn't work. And I finally went downstairs with a bandwidth is better. But, um, so, if you're going to message me, message me. Just wait for me to message you. But if you're going to give me a call, give me some head time warning. I'll go downstairs. I'll put on my headphones. Uh, the bandwidth is better here. Here, the bandwidth sucks. And the reason that Owl Ranch is not live is because of that. But anyway, back to the subject. I hate people that take my advice, right, and they only use part of it. Because what ends up happening is, 
oh yeah, I want a blaster that shoots 150 flat, but I want to use this um, this one spring. Or they'll try to use a combination of four springs, but instead of the springs I tell them to use. Yes, okay, a Black Tactical version 2 RET is from Singapore. Nowadays, you can use the Orange Modworks 7K, or you can use the Turf 8 kilogram as a center spring, and then either use the... Um, the, the, the 8 kilogram Swarmfire Orange Modwork Spring or use an HPI Hellfire Red which has a few more kilograms to it. But then I'll go, oh, it doesn't go as fast and I'm using these, these wimpy springs that add up to like 6 kilograms. And it's like, dude, you don't have power, you don't have force. Um, or people that will work on something, I'll tell them to do it a certain way and they won't. And it's just out of stubbornness. Or when I have a, an idea for something and I know it's going to work one way and it has to work that way and I designed it around, okay, let's say one example where I told a guy, okay, this is around 17, 30 seconds brass. This is what you do. He couldn't get it working, right? It was a sleeper breach. He couldn't get it working. And then I find out, oh, no, it's 916 brass. Ah, I sat here the whole time, right? Going like, okay, you used the right barrel material, right? Yes. You used the right pusher, right? Yes. Right? Oh, it's 916 brass. Uh, no, I, 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 I am thinking it up in 73 seconds because it was, it was 16 kilograms and it needed the pressure buildup. And no wonder, okay, my barrel calculations are all for 1730 seconds. They're not for 916th where you have air blowing by them. They're not for 13 millimeter aluminum where you have air blowing by them. They are for, by, by default, um, either half inch PVC or um, 1736 Express, which is 503 on the inside. So, uh, another one was a guy who, um, again, it was a spring issue, decided to use a K26 instead of, um, of the spring combination I said. Well, when he showed me it opening up, dude, that is not, that is not a, a retaliator spring and a swarm fire spring. What do you have in there? Oh, I just chopped up a K26. Well, of course you're not getting where you're supposed to be going. You know what I'm saying? So I hate people that do that. You know, if you want to take creative liberties on what you want to build, fine. But don't blame me for it when you go outside of specifics. I hate that. Um, number four. Um, people that are... Uh, uh, I'll carry it on with number three. People that are obsessed with K26s. Okay? To the point where, the, where they absolutely will try to use them on everything. Now, that is not saying I don't like the Can It Take a K26 show. Because I do. Because it tells me what kind of modding potential a blaster has. Can the catch take a high yield? Can a catch take a decently powerful spring? But it is not best for everything. Sure, you could put it in a long shot. Lots of Nick people have put it in a long shot before K26. But you get like five inches of spring, uh, five and a quarter of spring, and you have five inches of space. You use something like, oh, let's say a turf 20 kilogram long shot spring. You guys see that? This is five and uh, the five and a quarter long. It's uh, 2.73 gauge, um, a millimeter gauge. It is a hefty spring. They have gone a long way since the days of the Nick. Now, I think a K26 is great for a medium prime blaster, or it's great for, let's say, a blaster where you can control the solid space, because once you prime it all the way back, it's gonna be like three inches of coils once it's all the way primed. So you need three inches of space behind the trigger catch in order to take it. A caliber gets around it by making the cap from back here, and when it goes in, all of the all of the spring is in a cap, kind of like the sharp fire is, right? Also, you know, even if you can use a K twenty six, there are so many better springs. Go to spring store, try out a number forty nine uh, A spring or number forty nine Hillman. Try a number sixty two. Try a number sixty two in a sharp fire with brass. Wow, I mean, you will be amazed. This little dinky clumsy slide pistol that looks like a Nintendo Zapper can be one of the best pistols you ever built. Or put it in a tech target. Like, put a, put a number 62 in a, in a ace in a tech target. Wow. Uh, you know, I, I hate people that are so obsessed with that. And, and other things, too. Like, people that are just like, oh, flywheel's the only way. Springer's the only way. No. Okay, I may shoot Springer. Okay, I may shoot High power spring and super modded stock, but I don't look down at any other class of blasters. Rival, 
Uh, Vortex are people that love the shit out of Vortex. So she can make a swarm of death with Vortex. Nick Blasters. Um, I am one of those people that think that all nerf is interesting. It all is. I just have my own preferences. And five, finally, people that have aggressively high mod limits in wars. Not because that's wrong, because it isn't wrong. Uh, you know, a lot of times you're playing with kids and stuff, you want your mod limits to be low. But make them low to keep other players out of the game. Let's say a high power Springer. Let's say an HPA player. Of course, you know, you know, the, the Nick Dev doesn't like HPA. I can understand that. It throws the weapon balance off, but so does absurdly high um, mod limits, especially when you got like all adults and all of a sudden you got this 200 foot per second limit and everybody's above 18. What the fuck, you know? You get rid of that. You get rid of the snipers, you get rid of the long range players, you get rid of the Nick players. You throw the entire weapon balance off. And I don't find those games fun. I also don't like games that are just full length. Eh, I tried them. I don't like them. Usually what happens is you'll hit somebody from 150 feet away and go, oh, you didn't hit me. Because there's not enough impact left on the dart to really judge that you've been hit. So, And it's not because they're dishonest either. Okay, well, some. But mainly because you really can't feel it. Now, you take a 300 plus foot per second long shot or a Zeus like this baby right here, and they're going to feel it. One person last meet that I played with, I was like, wow, that feels like a paintball. Okay, so Monkey Mods has the new um, Aurora Cage out. This is really cool because if you guys remember my gripe about the um, my, my gripe about the worker cage is it's made for one bolt pattern and that's it. This one's made for all the above. It's a clear cage. It has a little bit of a squeeze to it. You can see how it's real tight. Make it a little more accurate. Uh, affordable cage. It's injection molded. Um, so you can get these for pretty inexpensive. But there's a lot of really good flywheel stuff coming out. Um, Serenity Cage is a really good one. A lot of stuff from the Open Flywheel Project, the Devil's Network, all that stuff. Um, definitely something to look out for. But this looks really cool. $20, man. $20 for this cage. That's not bad. I remember one time I paid for a urethane. Uh, well, I traded for a urethane uh, canted cage. And they were going for like $40 back in the day, back when canted wheels were a thing. I never used it. I ended up giving it to one of my friends that plays flywheel. I never use it because, of course, I'm just not flywheel enough. But that's a really good price. Also, the price these things seem to be going down. You know, they will be ready in mid to early October and Monkey Mods is home. I like Monkey Mods. They're a really good company to go from um, to, 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 to buy stuff from. Um, I helped them with a few things like those 13 millimeter barrels for a worker and for artifact and for the jet blasters and things like that just uh, gave back some feedback and this and that and i've also reviewed uh, quite a few stuff that came from monkey mods so definitely cool and then you know next week or so i am doing a review on the worker darts which the worker darts and the acc darts and the hand glue darts and the difference between those and i'm looking at them and i'm going I'm really glad I have my hand glued darts, you know. I'm, I'm going to give them a college try and all that stuff. And I even got blasters that have 13 millimeter barrels. That would be better with the worker darts. But I look at them and go, I mean, seriously. The general public is stuck with these. Really? What about flush rivets? Flush rivets. Don't you remember what Howard Drew said? Flush rivets. I made a dart like this once where the head was up and it had this big gap around and it slowed it down and when I took the same dart and I covered that up with glue and I fired it it went like I would say about 20 or 30 feet farther so it's definitely as the same thing I say about full length why is full length so popular well because you can go to a store and get full lengths not necessarily because they're better not necessarily because uh, people want them but because they're easy to acquire I can go to um, to Walmart Get this whole box of Venture Force darts, which by the way, these are actually pretty good darts. They're not good for brass, but they are good for making Stefans, and they are actually very good darts. For 10 bucks, 10 bucks for 200 darts, and it's actually fairly decent foam, and it's a fair, fairly decent product. You, you have to make Stefan darts, or you have to order them from NF Strike or Monkey Mods or someplace. Um, that's a pain in the butt. People want things off the shelf. 
even though, you know, toy stores, toy stores, in my opinion, are dying. And they're dying because, well, there's a lot of kids that are playing video games inside, stuff like that. And I think that has really impacted the toy industry. And the toy industry hasn't quite figured out a way to adapt from that. And I think that's why our toy aisles are getting smaller. Our, um, our you know, Toys R Us, places like Toys R Us went bankrupt because people don't play outside as much. But... Then again, you see places like Singapore where people really don't play outside because it's all sweaty and hot outside. And their Toys R Us is still open. Yeah, Singapore Toys R Us is still open. Can you believe that? So it's kind of yeah, change, you know what I'm saying? But um, I think a lot of the thing with work of arts is they're easy to get. They're easy to access. This is why people get these. And... I think the choice of what people use is more dictated by availability uh, than what's better. Where I go, well, I don't care what's better. You know, easier to get. I just care that I have my pack these, <laughs> my handmade pack these. And again, this is the Adventure Force uh, foam. Look how nice that is, dude. Look how nice that foam is, how thick it is. You know, it's really, yeah. So I've been making another batch of these. I got about 150 of these to go. And, uh, yeah. So, I mean, I think the, the problem is the choice is just not available. But that's just my opinion, of course. Lord Drac has invented um, a, 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 a product called the Tooth and Nail. And what it is, is it's metal catch and metal internals, internals for your caliber. This is huge. Look at how this is like hollow on the inside here. You got your, your piston with the airlets there. You got your, your metal trigger, your metal trigger shoe, your metal, your, me your metal catch arm. This is a really good project. I think that will, um, will really help the Caliburns a lot, bring it up to higher yields. I have seen Caliburns and Caliburn type blasters like the Chimera, the, the SAB Sniper, and all that stuff. Uh, start to take hold in this community and it really shows that you know the longer base blasters that are using the k26s the k31s the k25s are not out it's definitely not out i mean this is this is old school m blaster tech that has meeting new school design and captain slug started it all with caliber so 26 days ago um he, he's up to about 3500 dollars out of 5000 is the goal and with this, you can get, um, you, you can get, um, I mean, look at this, man. Wow. Um, let's see. If you pledge $6, um, you get, you get the sincerest gratitude, a postcard from Drac. Uh, if you pledge 75 you get one of these in red, black, or clear coating uh, with the aluminum sear, the aluminum trigger, all this stuff. Okay. Um, you, you get a set for 75. If you pledge 80, um, you get everything. But I think that it's, um, yeah, it's Andonized silver instead. And then for 160, you get the legacy combo with the grip, the whole nine yards. And for 500, He'll actually give you an Arcane Caliber build, which has a whole thing. So, I am not a big Caliber person. However, I do appreciate this very much. And I think this is a very big advancement. I would really like to see this go. I, th I think he he'll probably pull it off myself. He's at 3,500. He's got 26 days. Yeah, he'll pull it off. If not, I may have to uh, get out uh, 75 bucks of my money and actually pledge for this. I mean, I may be sitting around my room for a while, but yeah, for yeah, for eighty bucks, you get the plunger head, you get this all andonized in silver. Seventy five, you just get the the trigger and the catch. So you get the the tooth and nail, and you get it November two thousand eighteen. This you also get November two thousand eighteen, but you get the plunger and everything. See, I think this is a good set right here. If I had a Caliburn. I think it's a good set. When I first heard about it, I was like the Caliburn. When I first heard about it. My one doubt I had, now I had a feeling it would work, because if you use a heavy infill and you're using 14K, uh, like a K26, which has a long, soft draw to it, then uh, 3D printed should work. But my first gripe was, you know the catch, is that going to be rugged if I want to go past K26? And now it is. And now we're seeing more stuff like this come out. Oh, this is like, this is like really, really cool. So until next time, this is Chris Cartea. 
saying, don't you go changing? Happy birthday to me. That's right. 25th of September is my 43rd birthday. Um, I, pro I might not be around that much. I'll check my messages. I'll probably get a lot of happy birthdays. Like that. I'll try to keep a hold of you. But I'm thinking of either going to Disneyland or going to Long Beach or something. So I don't really know uh, what I'm going to do tomorrow. I know my family has something planned on Wednesday. So it's going to be a couple of days where you might not be able to get a hold of me. But um, just know that you just shouldn't go changing or I'll find you. Mm -hmm. Especially on my birthday. Thank you. 